Imagine controlling a $70 million fighter jet with nothing but your hands. On an aircraft carrier flight deck, that's exactly what happens. Yellow-shirted crew members direct multi-ton aircraft using a complex system of hand signals, where one wrong move could spell disaster. In this video, we'll decode the intricate language of flight deck hand signals. You'll witness the high-stakes world where split-second decisions and precise movements determine the success of naval aviation operations. The colorful world of flight deck crew. The flight deck of an aircraft carrier is a complex ecosystem, teeming with specialized roles and responsibilities. At first glance, it might appear chaotic, with personnel darting between massive jets and whirring propellers. However, a closer look reveals a meticulously organized system governed by a crucial element, color. The U.S. Navy employs a color coding system to identify different personnel on the flight deck. This visual distinction is vital in an environment where verbal communication is nearly impossible due to the deafening roar of engines. Without this system, the potential for confusion and accidents would increase exponentially. At the heart of flight deck operations are the yellow-shirted crew members. These individuals, known as aircraft directors, are responsible for guiding planes during taxiing, launching, and recovery operations. Their distinctive yellow attire makes them easily identifiable amidst the frenetic activity, allowing pilots and other deck personnel to quickly locate and follow their critical hand signals. But yellow is just one hue in the flight deck's colorful palette. Green-shirted personnel are responsible for catapult and arresting gear operations, playing a crucial role in both takeoffs and landings. Blue-shirted plane handlers move aircraft around the deck ensuring optimal positioning for maintenance and flight operations. Red-shirted ordnance men handle weapons and explosives, while purple-shirted fuel handlers manage the complex task of refueling aircraft. White-shirted officers and quality control personnel oversee operations, while brown-shirted air wing personnel perform maintenance on the aircraft. Each color represents a specific set of skills and responsibilities allowing for instant recognition in a high-stakes environment where every second counts. As we delve deeper into the intricacies of flight deck operations, it becomes clear how these various roles interact and complement each other. The yellow-shirted director might signal a blue-shirted handler to reposition an aircraft while simultaneously coordinating with green-shirted catapult operators for an impending launch. This color coding system enables efficient coordination in an environment where mistakes can have catastrophic consequences. It allows for split-second decision-making and seamless teamwork, essential elements in managing the complex dance of multi-million dollar aircraft on a moving airfield at sea. Understanding the significance of these colors is just the first step in decoding the language of the flight deck. Next, we'll explore the intricate system of nonverbal communication that allows these color-coded teams to work together with precision and efficiency. The silent language of hand signals. On an aircraft carrier's flight deck, a thumbs up doesn't simply mean good job. In fact, misinterpreting this common gesture could have dire consequences. Let's decode the unique silent language that keeps these floating airfields operating smoothly, where every movement of a hand can mean the difference between success and disaster. In an environment where the deafening roar of jet engines makes verbal communication impossible, the U.S. Navy relies on a standardized set of hand signals to ensure clear communication among the crew. These signals are essential for the safe and efficient operation of aircraft during takeoff and landing procedures. The potential consequences of misinterpreted signals on a flight deck are severe. Even a minor miscommunication can lead to catastrophic incidents, such as aircraft collisions or accidents during takeoff and landing. This high-stakes environment necessitates a system where every gesture carries precise meaning and leaves no room for ambiguity. One crucial aspect of this silent language is the distinction between above-waist and below-waist signals. Signals directed to pilots are communicated above the waist, while those intended for other crew members are given below the waist. This separation minimizes confusion and ensures that messages reach their intended recipients without misinterpretation. Among the essential hand signals used on the flight deck, several stand out for their importance. The thumbs up signal from the pilot indicates readiness for takeoff. The take tension signal, where the yellow-shirted director lifts one hand outward, signifies off the brakes. 
For landing operations, the hookup signal, where one thumb is placed in the open palm of the other hand, indicates readiness for landing. Mastering these hand signals is no small feat. New personnel are required to learn them quickly, often within the first few weeks of training. Their ability to interpret and execute these signals accurately is crucial for maintaining safety on the flight deck. Expert opinions suggest that some of the most challenging signals to master include the take tension signal and the final salute from the shooter, as they require precise timing and coordination with multiple crew members. As we delve deeper into the intricacies of flight deck operations, we'll explore how these seemingly simple gestures come together to choreograph the complex dance of launching a multi-million dollar aircraft from the deck of a moving ship at sea. Choreography of a catapult launch. Imagine a dance where a single misstep could lead to catastrophe. This is the reality of a catapult launch on an aircraft carrier. Each gesture, each movement, is part of an intricate ballet that propels tons of metal from zero to flight in mere seconds. The launch sequence begins with careful preparation. The aircraft is positioned on the catapult, its wings folded to conserve space on the crowded deck. A yellow-shirted director signals the pilot to spread the wings, using a sweeping motion of the arms from chest to fully extended outward. This seemingly simple action is crucial, as it ensures the aircraft is ready for flight. Before the aircraft can be launched, it must be armed. This requires the presence of an ordnance handler, identifiable by their red shirt. They ensure the pilot's hands are visible to prevent accidental weapon activation, a critical safety measure in this high-stakes environment. The key figure in the launch sequence is the shooter, responsible for the final launch signal. The shooter performs a series of checks, then gives the run-up signal by frantically waving their hands. This indicates to the pilot that it's time for a final check of the aircraft's instruments. Timing is everything in this carefully orchestrated process. The forces involved in a catapult launch are significant, with the aircraft needing to overcome the resistance of the holdback fitting on the rear of the nose gear. This requires precise coordination among all crew members involved. As the tension builds, the shooter performs the final decisive action. They drop to one knee and point forward, signifying that the launch is a go. This kneeling gesture is the culmination of all the preceding steps, the last human input before technology takes over. The moment of launch arrives. The catapult activates, and in a matter of seconds, the aircraft accelerates from stationary to flight speed. The success of this launch depends on numerous factors. The alignment of the launch bar with the catapult shuttle, the aircraft's weight, and environmental conditions like wind speed. As the jet soars into the sky, the cycle begins anew. The flight deck crew prepares for the next launch, knowing that soon they'll face an even greater challenge, safely recovering these high-speed aircraft on a moving ship at sea. The art of the arrested landing, while launching aircraft is a feat of precision, Bringing them back onto the carrier is where the real challenge begins. Landing on an aircraft carrier has been described as a controlled crash, but how controlled is it really when your runway is moving in three dimensions? The arrested landing system on an aircraft carrier is an engineering marvel designed to safely stop high-speed jets on a short runway. It consists of a series of cables stretched across the flight deck. As an aircraft approaches, it extends a tail hook that must catch one of these cables to rapidly decelerate the jet. The precision required for this maneuver is extraordinary. Pilots must aim for a landing area smaller than a tennis court on a ship that's pitching and rolling in the open sea. The margin for error is measured in mere inches. Despite these challenges, the U.S. Navy reports a remarkable 98% success rate for carrier landings, a testament to the rigorous training and skill of both pilots and deck crew. Central to this process is the landing signal officer. These individuals undergo extensive training, often requiring several years of experience as pilots before assuming this critical role. LSOs are responsible for guiding pilots during the landing approach, using a combination of visual cues and radio communication to ensure safe landings. As the aircraft makes its final approach, the LSO uses a series of hand signals to communicate with the pilot. These signals might indicate whether the aircraft is too high, too low, or off-center. In recent years, advanced landing systems have been integrated to provide real-time data to LSOs, further improving their ability to guide aircraft safely onto the deck. One pilot described the experience, the deck is moving, the wind is howling, and you have to focus on catching that wire. It's a dance of precision and timing. 
This visceral account underscores the intense concentration required for a successful arrested landing. The moment of touchdown is critical. As the aircraft hits the deck, the pilot must maintain full throttle in case the tail hook misses the cables. If the landing is successful, the sudden deceleration is intense, bringing the aircraft from 150 mph to a complete stop in just a few seconds. After touchdown, the pilot's job isn't over. They must perform a series of taxiing maneuvers directed by the yellow-shirted officer, who ensures the aircraft is positioned correctly for installing chocks and chains to secure it on the deck. This marks the end of one cycle, but on an aircraft carrier, the process of launch and recovery is continuous, a testament to the skill and endurance of the flight deck crew. The intricate system of nonverbal communication on aircraft carrier flight decks is a testament to human ingenuity in high-stakes environments. Through a combination of color-coded personnel and standardized hand signals, complex operations are executed with precision in conditions where verbal communication is impossible. This system enables the safe launch and recovery of multi-million dollar aircraft on a moving platform at sea. The dedication and skill required from all flight deck personnel cannot be overstated. From the yellow-shirted aircraft directors to the landing signal officers, each role demands intense focus and split-second decision-making. The potential consequences of even minor errors underscore the importance of rigorous training and unwavering attention to detail. Despite technological advancements in naval aviation, the fundamental reliance on visual signals remains crucial. High-ranking naval officers emphasize that the skill of flight deck crew members is critical to mission success. While future developments may incorporate new technologies to enhance existing methods, the core principles of this silent language will likely endure, ensuring the continued safe operation of aircraft carriers in modern naval operations.